So you want to be a certified personal trainer? Really? What's going on guys? Matty with Fusero Fitness. One of the most frequently asked questions that I get. How do I become certified? Which certification should I get? What gym should I work at? How much money can I make? If money is your number one incentive to be a personal trainer, find a different career, find a different job. That should not be the reason you want to be a trainer. Clients pay a lot of money for personal trainers. When I was training in a commercial gym, the going rate was $1 for one minute. That's $60 an hour, and I've seen some gyms charge upwards of $100 for an hour. Now, one thing you have to ask yourself is, if you were to hire a personal trainer, how would you want them to be? Do you want them to have big biceps? Do you want them to actually have knowledge? Do you want them to have hands-on experience? These are things you should think about when you think about becoming a personal trainer because a client is relying on you. They're paying you for this service because they have a lack of understanding or a lack of knowledge on training, on nutrition, on cardio, all of these things that they don't know so they're coming to you for help. A big thing is your personality. Are you outgoing? Are you an introvert, an extrovert? Do you get along with people really well? Do you like helping other people? Do you truly care about helping someone or are you just in it for the money? Your schedule is not going to be a nine to five. It's not going to be an eight to four. It's going to be whenever your clients can make it into the gym. So you may wake up at 5 a.m. for your 5.30 client and they might call and cancel. So you have to go home, maybe go back to bed, come back again at noon for your next client then your client at two, then maybe even come home because someone works late and they need to get a session in at eight o'clock at night. So you may be going all day, going back and forth, training people for maybe only a half hour to an hour. How do you build up a clientele? These are all things that you have to think about when you think about becoming a personal trainer. Now, when I was working in the commercial gym, as the new trainer there, I did everything I could to get myself out there, show my personality on the gym floor, show people that I'm not what most trainers are. Go to your local gym and what do you see? You see glorified rep counters and whistleblowers. People who sit there with their stopwatch and their iPhone while their clients on the floor doing push-ups and then when they're done with the push-ups, they get up and do jumping jacks while the trainer is off having a side conversation or reading a text message on their phone. I see this shit every day. I see them with the stopwatch, waiting for a minute, not communicating with the client, and letting them just go off. Maybe they're sitting on a stability ball, curling pink dumbbells, because they were told that that works your core and your biceps at the same time. This is the shit that you see in commercial gyms that the trainer doesn't want to be there. They need their paycheck and they want to go home. A client should come into the gym motivated to get through the training session, and they should leave with more than they came in with unless it's weight, they should never leave heavier, but unless they're trying to put on muscle. But seriously, the client should be inspired to come back and look forward to the next training session. They should leave with more knowledge. Teach them something each training session. Don't just have them start bench pressing and not tell them why they're doing that movement. Encourage them to be involved in the creation of the program. You have to do exercise programming. You have to do program design and you should be explaining to them why they're doing certain movements. You're not going to take a 23-year-old guy who's on a legs push pull workout and put a 75-year-old woman on the same program. These are things you have to know. You have to work with special populations, people with disabilities, people who are incapable of doing certain movements. Are you capable of doing that? Can you work with someone who has special needs? The certifications may teach you that. Now, there are a lot of nationally recognized certifications in the US. You have the NSCA, you have NASM, you have ACE, you have ACSM. But again, it's what you do with that certification and how much you're willing to learn outside of what that certification offers. So how do you do that? Network with people. Do your own research. I don't watch much TV or play many video games. I don't even think I own a video game system aside from like Super Nintendo and N64. But uh, that's besides the point. I like to spend my time on what I care about. I put my heart and soul into learning more and more each and every day. Now, the more I learn, the more I realize I don't know shit. There is so much information out there and I'm hungry for knowledge. I want to learn more. I want to be the best that I can be at what I do. So here are some things you can do. Go to your local library and rent a textbook or buy it. Buy a used copy on Amazon. There are students who would 
love to sell this to you because textbooks are expensive as hell and they need the money. Find someone who's selling a textbook. Simple anatomy and physiology, things that you should learn, how the body works. Something like that. What about something like this? The biomechanics of human movement. Learn about uh, functional anatomy and movement and human motion and why things work. What is the function of your bicep? Now you'll probably learn this while you're going for your certification, but don't just learn the basics. Learn more. Go beyond what they teach you. Be better than the person who's sitting next to you in the chair taking the same test as you. It's how can you stand out. <clears throat> Grab a book like this, Super Training. This is an excellent book that will teach you a ton that you probably won't learn in your certification. Or you might, but this will go beyond that and give you a lot of practical information. The fundamentals of biomechanics, philosophy of physical training, adaptations, periodization, the influence of external conditions on strength. So daily stressors in life, these things have to do with your strength in the gym. How much are you sleeping? Proper nutrition. Not all certifications will teach you about proper nutrition. And keep in mind, some of them will be dated. A lot of trainers in the gym today do not keep up to date on current research. They go by their experience from years and years ago. You have your 40 and 50 year old trainers in commercial gyms who swear up and down that they know more than you because they've been doing it longer. But how much time have they put in to keeping up on current research? Shit that people need to know. Not because he has big biceps and he can bench press 400 pounds. That doesn't make a good trainer. It's how well can you mesh with your client? What's the comfort level? Do you get along with them? You should be doing what my acronym says is helping them achieve mental and physical toughness. Amped. Are they amped? Are they achieving that? Now you don't have to be a therapist. You don't have to get into their social life, which you shouldn't do. You should stay away from you know, their personal issues. But if they come to you with that, you have to be able to inspire them to get through the training session and they should want to come back the next day and train with you again. And hell, they should be telling their friends about how good of a trainer you are, that that's how you're getting your new clientele. So you're going to run into times where your client's not seeing any results and whose fault is that? It could be yours, it could be the client's. They may not be adhering to the plan properly, but you have to be able to communicate with them and find out ways to make shit work. So again, being a personal trainer is something that you have to show true passion for. It's not about counting reps. It's not about writing a program of an upper lower routine and telling them to track their macros and get on MyFitnessPal and that's how they get shredded. They don't know this information. They don't know what macros are. You have to teach them these things. They're coming to you for a reason. So this is what you see most trainers in the gym basing their knowledge off of. Now, nothing against muscle fitness, nothing against Superman, but the information in here about getting huge now and getting three inches on your arms in 24 days, it's not going to happen, guys. You have to be more practical than that. You know, you see people doing push-ups on a medicine ball. Don't read through the routines in here and give your client that routine. The programs have to be designed for that client's specific goals, and it's your job to do that. So... You want to be a personal trainer, you better be passionate about what you're doing. You better get along with the client, be an outgoing person, show your personality. And when you're in that gym working with a client and they're busting their ass training, you better be right by their side motivating them and inspiring them to push through the workout and look forward to coming back and seeing change. Because if they're not seeing any change and they're not reaching their goals, what the hell are they paying you for? That's my take on it. So next time you see a trainer in the gym talking about the weather and how he can't wait to be on his boat this weekend, look for someone else. Hopefully that helped you guys out. You know, I, I again, I pride myself on trying to be the best that I could be and, and I've spent years, you know, networking with some of the best in the industry, the experts, Alan Aragon, Brad Schoenfeld, Lyle McDonald, the people who have put in the time and the research they're Google shit, guys. There, there are tons of research and evidence-based articles out there for free. There are sports journals. There's Google Scholar. Look into this information. You know, be hungry for knowledge. Learn as much as you can, and then take that knowledge and use it. Don't just study for a test. Take that test, and then think you can be the best personal trainer. Be passionate about it. Care about your your knowledge. Care about your client, and go ahead and show people up. 
Show people that you are the best personal trainer. And why you're the best? Because you're bringing results to these clients and they're telling people about it and you're the spotlight in that gym. So that's my take on becoming a personal trainer. Uh, again, there's, it's a lot more than just taking a test, passing it. Get that hands-on knowledge. I'm just ranting now, guys. Uh, hopefully this helped you out. Uh, if it did, if personal training is something that you truly care about and it's something that you want to do, look into it and make sure. Talk to people who have been doing it for a long time, who have the up-to-date experience, who bring results. That's what matters, guys. So I'm done rambling. Thank you for watching the video. I hope it helped you guys out. I appreciate your support as always. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new to the channel. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, links are all in the description box below. Our website, www.fusarofitness.com. The online coaching will open up shortly. And that's it, guys. So I appreciate the support again. And until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Every day you get a chance to wake up, you have to be extremely grateful. You're presented with a new opportunity.